What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Monday, October 7th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat. Stand up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, what will happen to oil prices if Israel attacks Iran oil installations? <laughs> Newsflash, they're going up. Next up, <laughs> sticking with that theme, Israel-Iran showdown threatens India's energy security. Next up on the global stage, Tariffs backfire as China outmaneuvers rivals with global EV investments. And then finally here at home, House GOP probes if activist scientist flawed study led to Biden-Harris LNG export pause. Very, very interesting. Finally then, Stu will toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened on Friday in the oil and gas markets, mainly covering what was kind of a pretty positive week for prices, going from anywhere from $67 to finishing around that $74 mark. And then we will quickly touch on rig counts and let you get out of here and start your week. As always, I am Michael Tanner, back from vacation. I was gone all week, guys, so I appreciate you, Stu, holding down the fort but where do you want to begin hey let's start with our buddies there in israel and iran holy smokes michael what will happen to oil prices if israel attacks iran oil installations i wrote this when i getting ready for tomorrow's energy realities podcast with david blackman Irina slav and tammy nemeth and we're gonna be talking about oil prices around the world and if Israel were to attack Iran's oil installations, the immediate impact on oil prices would likely be a significant increase. Really? But there's different layers. I didn't really even think about half of this until going through the research on this. Small scale attack, only 5%. Major refinery or export terminal. There's one island, Michael, it's I believe the Karg Car Island has 95% of their export. But if they actually did the downstream, that would have a whole different animal. Mm -hmm. I did not know, Michael, that Pakistan is a gray market where they smuggle in gasoline from Iran. <laughs> I did not know that one. So when you take a look at this, this is really bad. But Michael, Josh Young, I absolutely recommend everybody follow Josh Young. When you take a look at what sanctions matter if they're imposed and done correctly. Look at the amount of Iran-linked violence in the Middle East is spiraled out of control. Do you want to know why we got here? Take a look at this one chart, Trump versus Biden on the impact of oil field sanctions and the implementation. But let's also look at Ananias here real quick. Dr. Ananias is just wonderful recommend him as well too during the biden administration not only u.s crude exports hit record but iran's hit export big time now here's the key thing dan salt on twitter i love this one he has a big red circle around the troubled spots it's the middle east and he goes bang that is an analysis that i can deal with who knows what's going to happen, Michael? I don't know how it's going to turn out. If Israel strikes and does a death blow on this, I think it's going to help. The only person that's going to help is Russia. Everything yeah. else is a failure. Again, I think what I like about this article is it kind of breaks it down into kind of multiple different scenarios. You've got the small scale attack, which is, you know, if they're, if it's limited to a potential small portion of wherever their Iranian oil output is, you could see somewhere of a, a five to 10 percent increase because, you know, that number probably will be about 10 to 20 percent of Iranian oil production. It takes offline. If that's escalated into, as you said, an export terminal, this is where you could see that oil price increase past one hundred dollars a barrel specifically on both the WTI and the Brent oil price. Right. You know, Carg Island has the majority of their oil refining capacity and you could see somewhere between 30 to 50 percent. You know, I mean, if it's if it's a full scale attack, I mean, you're, you're going to see anywhere between 120, probably yeah. and 150 dollars a barrel, which would absolutely be devastating to the economy, not just exactly. here in the United States, but also abroad. It'll be interesting to see where, you know, Israel goes. I mean, they're really fighting a war on seven fronts, so you can't necessarily blame them for having this opinion. I would be interested to see, though, specifically with the U.S. providing a lot of advice to them, what they decide to do in response to all this escalation. I mean, you know, the, the one word to describe all of this, Stu, spicy. Uh, spicy. And and the one thing that I've, I'm getting a lot of ridicule from, from commenting on folks on Twitter, or excuse me, X, if you can imagine that, is China. Everybody's saying that they put too much weight 
on China's demand and its impact on oil. I don't think that that's a false number because they're buying everything they possibly can anyway. And that's what happens when countries go to war and they are worried about the geopolitical front. So they're bu- they're going to buy everything they can get anyway. Let's go yeah. to the next story, Michael. Israel-Iran showdown threatens India's energy security. I love this article from the standpoint. It also has a choke point map in there. And I, I quite honestly knew, you know, you think about the Suez Canal or the Strait of Hormuz or the Strait of Malka or the around the Cape of Good Hope or any of these kind of things. But there's all these other smaller choke points as well, like in the Gulf of Mexico. And oh, speaking of the Gulf of Mexico, there's another hurricane coming rolling in. Holy smokes, Batman. It's going to be a dicey week, but let's go to the a blockade of the Strait of Hormuz would be particularly alarming for India since it's the route that from Iraq and Saudi Arabia that LNG takes from Qatar. They take they get most of their their oil from or their LNG from Qatar, but they buy they have been really buying Russian oil ever since the sanctions have kicked in because they've been able to buy less than Brent, big time less than Brent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Middle East right now has really driven as what we'll talk about some of the the, the price increase, specifically in the WTI index over the last week. You know, India, you know, they're they do what's best for India. We, we've talked about that for, for, for years now. I do find it interesting with all the talk about how much Russian oil they're importing. They also get a lot from the Middle East and find themselves in this weird bite, not bystander, but really a bystander standpoint from from the fact that. I mean, where are if things do bust out in the Middle East, where do they and where do they come and all of this? So super interesting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're going to be on it and really take a look at this. Speaking of China, our buddies over there, President Z is like trying to set, get on the podcast. So I'll let you know if we actually get through with that one. Tariffs backfire as China outmovers rivals with global EV investments. Do you remember when you and I were laughing and the Chinese wanted to inv- interview us over the, was it the tankers in the bay? That we went from a Putin advisor to a Xi advisor. So uh, absolutely. Um, China is investing heavily in electric vehicle assembly plants, battery plants, and transition technologies. They are really outmaneuvering everybody on this. Hungary is a beneficiary of what the Financial Times reported as a tsunami of transition investments around the world. Central European country is often at odds with the central EU government in Brussels. And they should be. The Chinese invested abroad roughly 12% increase, unbelievable, or $112 billion over the first eight months of this year. They're printing money and going after the EV market. They really are. And I think they see an opportunity with the extreme high cost of you know domestic made EVs. They see they have a chance to go ahead and make small ones. Now, both Trump and Biden have mentioned the tariffs that they're going to levy on China in an, in an attempt to even the playing field. But but really, I think what gets hurt in this scenario is, one, a product that's not differentiated. It's one of the reasons why I think Tesla will win, even if they are more expensive, is because they've differentiated themselves from the market by having full self-driving, by having you know basically a completely new concept for a vehicle. I mean, you get into a Tesla, you feel like you've walked into a spaceship relative to some of these other cars. Whereas, and and, and so there, you always what really gets hurts that middle market brand. You know the the you know the Ford EV. We've talked at nauseum about how much they lose per vehicle. Well, they're going to get pounded because there's no differentiation. And if the only right. differentiating factor of your car is that it's electric, well, you're going to lose to a gas-powered vehicle every single time, at least today, because of the efficiency of it. So I think it's extremely – it's in everyone's favor to either continue to make luxury EVs and make them as novel as possible and find what your niche is. Tesla's figured it out with the self-driving, but then also figure out, okay – we are probably then going to have these really low cost options from China because they've gone out and sourced all of the mineral. I mean, because the biggest input into all of these cars from a cost standpoint is the sourcing of the raw minerals and metals and that goes into this. And China has a done a great job of going out and getting all of those mines under its control. You bet. 
Hey, shout out to Irina Slav for Oil Price. That's where we uh, got this article from. She is a fabulous authoress. Yes. All right, let's go to the next story here. House GOP probes if activist scientist flawed study led to Biden-Harris or Harris-Biden LNG export pause. This is absolutely horrific. And the reason I say horrific, the GOP has done absolutely nothing but kind of hold a hearing and then pretend to investigate. This is the kind of crap that should be investigated, tried, hung, and, and then hold up and quit printing money. They ought to close the government down until some of this kind of crap is stopped, but they're not going to. So Howarth is an outspoken advocate for the uh, rapid elimination of fossil fuel is on the board of directors of the anti-fossil fuel nonprofit food and water watch. You think he is a little biased? Just, just slightly. <laughs> just slightly. And when you take a look at this picture, she is Kamala Harris. I got to hand it to Grok. I asked Grok on X. Would you create a picture of Kamala Harris? And this is what it came up with, with her, with legislation through regulatory regulatory action. It's a very good looking picture created by X. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're you you are all over Grok on X. You're I'm surprised you're you're going to end up just bringing that on as a full time employee here sooner or later. Well, eight dollars a month. It's a lot cheaper than I am. So no kidding. No <laughs> kidding. And you know what? It does what you ask it to as well. Not all the time. It's kind of like a wife, you know? <laughs> Hallucinates a little bit. We're used to that around here. Don't worry. Absolutely. All right. Off to you, dude. All right, guys. Well, with that, <laughs> let's go ahead and, and jump into the finance section. But before we do that, let's go ahead and pay the bills. As always, the news and quote-unquote analysis that you just heard is brought to you by the world's greatest website, .energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Go check out the description below for all links to the timestamps, links to the articles. You can hit us up the energynewsbeat.substack.com. Um, you can also hit us up investinoil.energynewsbeat.com. If you are interested in finding more out about our direct working interest project, it's it's that time of year again, guys. If you need tax deduction and you need to lower your overall income so that you don't have to give it away, I mean, you want to be giving it away to, to, to whatever administration gets newly elected? No, I'm good. Check us out. We have a great way to save on taxes, generate a little bit of extra cash flow on a monthly basis, and really become an oil man. That's the fun part about it. Own some working interest. Put your money where your mouth is. It's really awesome. Check it out again. Invest in oil dot energy newsbeat dot com I mean, so oil prices on, on a week-to-week -week basis, guys, we saw a huge increase. We started the week at about $67. It currently sits at 74 You know, when we look at the other indices, specifically on Friday, we saw the S&P 500 up about nine-tenths of a percentage point. NASDAQ up 1.2 percentage points. A two- and 10-year yields went up 5.9 and 3.14 percentage points, respectively, which is pretty unbelievable. Dollar index was actually up a half a percentage point. We did see Bitcoin stabilize at around that 62 two thousand dollar mark it's up about eight tenths of a percentage point here saturday to sunday crude oil was up about a full percentage point 74 38 uh brent oil fairly flat actually dropped about a one tenth of a percentage point 78 36 natural gas was down about four percentage points down to two dollars and 85 cents but it continues what really was a nice bull run for the last part of the week i think a lot of what is coming down is is the fact that some of that gulf of mexico production is coming back online but really when we talk about what happened with oil prices this week, it really goes back to those first two articles that we talked about, Stu. I mean, you know, what goes on in the Middle East, that's really going to drive where these oil prices were. You know, I love how Biden comes out and says, quote, he would consider alternatives to striking Iranian oil fields if he was in Israel's shoes. Well, at least he woke up and said, I mean, you know, even a blind mice finds cheese once in a while, because I do agree with him. I think Israel probably, you know, and this is just an opinion, Israel has to respond. The question is, is responding by hitting oil fields the right move? That's, I would say, from a global economic standpoint, no, but I can't answer that question. So that's, you know, sometimes, you know, they woke him up from his 2 p.m. nap, gave him some talking points. He stumbled through it. I mean, what do you think, Stu? If you're Israel, where are you? Because you have to respond. 
The question is, is the oil fields the best place to do it? I say no. I couldn't agree more. And here's where I get a little bit worked up. They need to be able to supply their own oil and gas enough for their own people and then go ahead and do that. That's one thing. And then in destruction of that impacts the global humanity uh, on a general rule. If Biden or Harris, whoever's in charge, says, OK, let's let them take out the nuclear bomb manufacturing facilities, I could almost actually agree with that, except there is now evidence out there, supporting evidence that's pretty strong. They may already have six or seven nuclear weapons. Now, it may have already passed that time that they can go after their nuclear weapons. I think if they did anything that go after the nuclear weapons only, that is just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I it's it's now we're talking about, well, don't hit the oil, go hit the nukes. It's like we're literally living in the Truman show, I think. It, it is. And but you know what? If you look at that one chart from our first article, the difference was Trump enforced the critical sanctions and it held them to no money. Yep. That is where all this was. There were no wars under Trump, no new wars under Trump, period. So yeah, we also did see the 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 whatever the supply fears in Libya, which we, we all knew was kind of just a dog and pony show. We knew they were going to resolve it, but all that oil is now back on the market. Didn't quite do much relative to prices. So, you know, I think if, as, as you're listening to this Monday morning, we'll probably see prices roll over, you know, probably in that, you know, 7450, 7460 range. But it'll be interesting to see what news drops this afternoon. Yeah, it was a long week, Stu. Obviously, I was out. Wasn't much really that happened in, in terms of, you know, what I would call EMP upstream news. It was a lot of geopolitical news, so I'm glad you had the week to to vent. I only caught a few of the shows, so I, I'm, you know, again, I apologize for anybody who, who was listening. But if we throw up rig counts here, we did see rig counts week over week drop by two, 585. That's still down about 34 from last year. But again, now you can see rig counts, and this time we're sort of sliding. We're kind of leveling out about that. It's going to, you know... It, I think a lot of people and and what you're seeing is the the price environment that we're in is due to geopolitical and other explanatory factors. We love good seventy five dollar oil. I think the issue is and what we we're dealing with on the u s economy side, specifically from inflation, the cost of everything from an from an oil field service standpoint has gone up, and rightfully so, oil field service service companies have to make money. But I think that right. has led to, your $75 oil is your new $60 oil. And when I say that is $60 generally was considered that line between, hey, we'll start considering drilling and we're going to go ahead and hold off and maybe wait for a, either a better price environment or wait for a wait for a better deal. Figure out if we can make more oil. Because I mean, you can make, you know, if, if you're making 10,000 barrels a day and it costs you $5, you can make money in any oil price. So it's a matter of price, volume and cost. That's the three-legged monster that you have to deal with when you're talking about all this. So that's what I think you're seeing here is the $60 price, which used to be kind of that balancing act for all three of those, is now truly become $70, $75 oil. And with the consolidation happening around the industry, you're, you're seeing less and less willingness to go out on a limb here. I mean, a lot of the I men, most of these rigs are, are by the, the, the same five companies we keep screaming about. So... I think it's going to be very interesting as we move kind of into the last quarter this year, what all happens. We're going to start seeing a bunch of earnings come down the pipeline, so be ready for that. But, you know, I would just say uh, it, it's it's only going to get more interesting, Stu. What, what should people be worried about this week? Like I mentioned, the Hurricane Milton, our prayers will go out for the folks in yes. Florida. Get your generators set up. Go out and make sure that you're ready to help your neighbors out. No matter where you are in the U.S., we don't know natural disaster or man-made disaster always be prepared yep always be prepared yeah you know and, and everyone who's still trying to survive from from hurricane helene we you know our thoughts and prayers are with you guys specifically in that kind of western carolina area so you know hopefully you can you know Stu always says be prepared for the worst but with that guys we're gonna go ahead and let you get out of here get back to work start your week we appreciate you checking us out here on the world's greatest podcast for Stuart Turley, i'm michael tanner we'll see you tomorrow folks